Hi guys, this is Amanda Brock of Rogue Core Studios here, and I am really excited to share with you um, our first exclusive uh, full video tutorial for my Patreon subscribers. I want to personally thank you all for being a patron. It really helps me continue to do what I love every single day, and I am able to share awesome uh, tutorials with you, and hopefully you will get something out of it <laughs> and that it's helpful. Uh, so our first tutorial is actually going to be about sculpting a running braid. And I have the lovely uh, Vermeer here, who is going to be our victim. And as you can see, here it is. So if you would like to learn to sculpt a running braid, just continue to watch this video. Okay, before I start with the tutorial, I just wanted to go ahead and go over um, the basic supplies that you will need. Um, you need a two-part epoxy of your choice. Uh, my preferred brand is Magic Sculpt, but you can use whatever one works best for you. Um, you will need alcohol, rubbing alcohol of some sort. I use the 91% isopropyl alcohol. 70% uh, works fine. The higher the alcohol content, uh, the less water is in it and the less gummy your epoxy will be when you smooth it. A um, little container for your alcohol with some epoxy only brushes and then you will have some assorted tools, whichever tools you prefer most for sculpting. Um, I have various metal tools, um, little spatulas, and <coughs> I really like a lot of different sizes of the ball stylus and I will link all those below as to where I got them and of course throughout the video I'll tell you which ones I'm using. And last but not least you will need your model and a reference picture. <clears throat> so this is the reference picture I pulled for Vermeer. I wanted to do a chunkier running braid um, and this is a running braid that's running down only one side of his neck so all the mane is going to be on this side there's not going to be one on either side. And so that makes it a little bit thicker in there. So here's the reference picture. Whee! We'll go by that and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so this first part, I did not realize my microphone was not turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about what I'm doing here and talking about. So I've got my epoxy mixed up. And what I'm going to do is start applying the epoxy to the neck, the area that is underneath the braid first and I will apply that using little just small tiny squat noodles and I will continue to place that down at the back of the neck these will get a little slightly longer in length as we go towards the base you can kind of see in the reference picture itself that the braid gets a little bit further and further away from the crest of the neck and kind of droops downward so we will make those gradually a little bit longer you don't have to do it this way with the noodles um, you could just put one thin sheet over it i just find this visually a little bit easier for me to see kind of how the braid is going to be laid out Um, we're not going to worry about the other side of the neck right now um, and where those epoxy noodles fall. We're just going to kind of um, focus on this side. And then once we are done a little further along, we'll flip over to the other side and refocus back on that. And at that point, I do have audio that works. Yay! Okay guys, so I have laid out the bulk of those ribbons. I kind of smushed them in just a little bit on the off side just a moment ago. And now what we're gonna do is put the actual big noodle on here for the braid itself, for the base. Just take a little bit of that epoxy off and we're gonna roll it. We're gonna taper it more on one end than the other. You'll see here, the one end has a pretty long taper and then the other one I just put a basic little point and that is going to be towards where the forelock is, towards the top of the braid. And then the other part will go down that way. Now this noodle itself is actually pretty thick. It's about probably a quarter inch 
thick at the widest point in the middle. You can kind of see just based on the reference photo, um, the width, you know, depending on what breed and what style you're sculpting um, as to the correct width for you. I started with a bit of a thicker noodle because I wanted this breed to be pretty heavy looking. And I start by applying it up towards the top, right behind where the bridle path would be. And then we're going to gently, not mush too hard, just gently press it in down along the neck. And the end, we don't really worry about position at this point. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do if I was going to do the full braid to the end like the picture, or what I eventually decided to do, which was to uh, cut it off and have a loose bit at the end of it here. So we're just knocking that shape right in there. And once we have our decent layout, we can go ahead and get started here. Kind of showing you from the side just how thick it is. You can see it's got a lot of shape that we're going to have to work with. Just to quickly smooth over the whole thing with just alcohol with my finger. That's crazy. I don't push too hard because I don't want to flatten it out too much. All right, so now we are going to start looking into the braid itself when we go to start. The braids are really tricky. What I find the easiest way to sculpt them is to actually break them down into separate individual parts. So what I'm talking about first here is if you look down the direct middle of the braid, you can actually see a distinct zigzag form just straight down the middle. And that is what I start with. When I do any type of running braid like this, or a long braid, even if they were like long individual tendrils, I will go ahead and start with the zigzag in the middle. That helps me kind of identify where the braid's going to be. And I can lengthen the zigzag um, pattern based on how, where it is on the neck. And what I do for this is I use my tiny little um, AMC Creatures uh, spatula tool. It's Super flat, it comes to a pretty sharp edge, but not sharp that won't cut anything. But it's just enough to give a really definite, defined line. Here we go. So I start up at the uh, pole area first. And I just start and zigzagging the zigzags up towards the top will be a little bit closer together. As I get towards the middle, you can see on the reference itself, the braid gets a little bit thicker. So that little zigzag pattern will actually lengthen a bit. Keep slip swapping between these two different spatula tools. Um, what I did do is draw a faint line just down the middle of the tendril itself, and that kind of gave me um, an idea of where to place the zigzag itself, because when you're doing that, it kind of get lost and you can drift easily. So we'll just start going down the braid itself. I will dip that tip of that tool into alcohol every so often just so that it's not making a lot of uh, little chatter marks pulling you know pulling and lifting that epoxy we don't really want that we want to try and be a little bit neat you can see 
as we start to get back down towards the lower part, you can see that braid is more collected in that picture. So the little zigzags will get a little bit closer together, a little bit steeper on the way down. Can't remember what I was trying to explain here. We're just going to keep zigzagging. And I stopped probably, I mean, you can see here I stopped. I didn't go all the way down because I figured at that point I, I knew I was going to have a loose end held together with a little band. So I just went ahead and stopped doing that. And then after that, at this point, we were going to start putting the lines, the other parts of the lines in, which help define this braid um, using this pointed end tool. These tools I got on in a set on Amazon, I believe. They're relatively cheap. They're just like little dental tools. I highly recommend them if you don't have them. They're super awesome and super, you can use them for like everything. So many different uses for each tool. So what we can see at this point is I'm going to go in and start applying the little diagonal lines. And this is going to go down and kind of wrap around and under the braid itself. And it'll connect up at each zigzag you'll kind of see in here. It'll be in focus. Nice camera. Struggle with technology is real. Okay, good. You can see this. Oh, and, and I switched back to my other tiny flat spatula tool. I really don't have set tools um, for a particular job. I basically just use whatever works best. So you'll kind of see me swip swap between a lot of different tools. Kind of as I go. So you can see down here we're just doing basically just straight lines all the way down. We're not really pushing in too far yet. It's just to kind of define the look of the braid itself. And I'll do that down one side all the way down towards the bottom. And then I will go ahead and redo the other side using the same method. Let's see, I'm trying to zoom in just a little bit more here. I'm still learning my camera, but you can see right there those diagonal lines, which really you can start to see the shape of the braid a little bit more. And then I start going up the other side and matching up those other lines. And we'll just continue that right up the side of the neck again. All right, while I'm letting this part cure for a little bit, I decided on what I'm gonna do with the end down here. So what I did is I went ahead and I cut it off straight right here. And I put a little tiny indent in and cut a little bit off the sides and basically that's going to make the little band 
that is tying off the braid. Go ahead and push this in here around the edges and that will give the impression that the braid is kind of pulling into that little band down there and it's holding it together. And then I will go ahead and add back in some tangles on the base. It also helps if you after you stand it in to kind of stand them up on their end here to make sure that it's following gravity. Then I'll add another little tendril in here. Kind of smush that down. And then I'll put another one just to bulk it up a little bit. It doesn't have to all be separate. You can glob it all in one and then it after. I just like to do this. It's a little visually easier for me to see what I'm doing. So, so after we get this all in here, I'm going to go back in with one of my uh, little ball stylus tools. Now this one right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's really, really tiny. I'll put the link for this in there in the description. It's one of the Kemper ball sculpting tools and this one is like it's almost hard to distinguish it on the end there but use either one of those and I'm going to start to define my braids a little bit more and you can start anywhere I just started in the middle for no particular reason. I want to make sure that the hair flow, you can start kind of roughing in how it flows into the braid. That will also help mimic that braid a little bit more. And then I will go in with a little soft brush and just kind of smooth that out a little bit. And then I'll use my little tiny spatula again to kind of really add some depth. I like the sound of gunfire. Even this little tool isn't quite sharp enough. So what we're going to start doing is I'm actually going to go in. I think I'm going to try this. Let's see if this tool works. That'll be good for after. That's a little too sharp. Because I'm going to use another one of these. Where is it? This is another one of the AMC Creatures ones. I have all of these tools. I recommend getting them. They're good for so many things. Uh, this is just kind of like a flat spatula like these other two here. Um, but this one comes to a nice point on the end. Alright you guys, sorry my camera died for a second there. Back on track. So I'm just continuing to do that little bit of detailing with that. Um, for braids, after a while, it you really have to wait for this to get pretty hard um, before you continue, and that's just to really get those crisp details in. But for now, we're still going in, blocking in, still going in and blocking in some more detail. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. Come on. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to continue defining these some more, and I'm going to switch back and forth from different tools. Actually, another tool that I really like is this little tiny, it's a little tiny spoon. This also works to kind of give this more depth. And 
And if you ever get confused as to where you're on the braid, don't forget to look at the paper because I do it all the time. It is really tricky. There's like so much going on. And I'm completely out of the picture. Let's try that again. So, I'm just going back over here and defining these. Sorry, it was out of the picture. This is just more stuff on this side. We'll click under here. You can start to see it gets a little bit mushy at this point because the epoxy is still soft and then we're really starting to use more and more alcohol to really get these a little bit more defined in here. We're going to get to the point here pretty soon where we have to take a break so that we don't mush all of the nice shaping that we've gotten into here. And we're going to mush it a little bit when we go to smooth this out, but you can definitely start to see the braid becoming a little bit more 3D. More dimensional. And you can see once I get up, I turn it this way towards the crest, it starts to get a little bit flat again through here. So what I will do is I will use my tiny little scoop spoon. And we'll kind of take that out, round that out a little bit. the difference between like up here where I haven't touched yet and down here where I'm just starting to scoop that in there. Right. It's okay if there are little bits that get like, I don't know, mushed and they don't like belong anywhere. We'll clean those up in a little bit. We're just continuing down the mean here and defining this side. Hopefully, oops, hopefully we can see this little bit here. I'm just going to lay this all the way this way. And I'm just going to continue to do that all the way up real quick here. And that just kind of helps define it more and give the braid some more roundness since we know it's nice and round looking. Don't want these flat areas in here. Kind of ruins the braided look. It doesn't look as dimensional. Stop blathering on. Finish this. I 
sorry if my hand's in the way. It's kind of a weird area of the main to do. You can kind of see here how we've got a little bit more definition along here. It's a little more round. Oh my god, I'm throwing things. I can back that up. that and this will also help round it out a little bit more. Now it's like we carve detail in and then wipe it away. But we're getting there. Braid is starting to look much more braid-like. Wow. Alright, so now I'm going to leave this braid alone for a few minutes. Um, it's really got to get some of that alcohol and some of the goopiness just from it being under cured right now. Out, and we're going to work on this part. And you can kind of see on here, it kind of goes just in little lines. About the same amount of plates there are along here is about where it is there. So, what should I use? I think I might use this. So this is my other spoon tool. It's got a flat tool on one end and then kind of like a weird little point thing on the other. Let's see if we can get a start defining these a little bit more. Actually what I'll do first is I'm going to take this part where the mane connects to the neck and I'm going to smooth it into the neck a little bit. And then, oops, and I wished that on the side of that neck. Uh, is my little knife tool. And then what I will do is take a knife, a spoon, a spatula, anything that would work. It's just, just got a semi tapered edge on there. And then I'm just going to run this up here. And that will kind of get rid of the excess over bits of the mane that we don't need. And then extra epoxy to the side. Then I'll go ahead and take this flat part of the spatula and just really press really hard to smush this into the neck itself. Because um, that'll start where our transition is from main to the neck. And if it winds up getting a little too thin, we can always go back and add in some more. Push this on first and then we'll define those little individual tendrils here. So we've got that. Let's see on here we're still mushing along. This is in focus. Take some extra off again right here. smooth that out. Let's use my finger and some alcohol. And now we can go back to putting in these ridges. So let's turn it this way here. I'm going to have a little, push it pretty deep towards the back and kind of work our way back out. So it creates some depth in there. We'll further refine that in a little bit. I'm just going to get these in place here. I'm just going to kind of run over this between the braid and that, and that just kind of knocks back 
the sharper edges so it looks more rounded because that's what we want. Let's just look at that. Mm -hmm. okay. And then that's just kind of dirt buffed in there. So now we'll take our alcohol again, wipe the excess off on a paper towel. I wiped too much of it off. Put it back in. And we'll run up this way like that. And that'll help kind of differentiate the braid from the neck again, and then we'll just kind of push this back. And you can also use your fingers, and you can kind of see where we're starting to get at over here. Wow. Alright, now what I'm going to do, since we have the bulk of the shaping in right now, um, all of the shaping in, what we really need to do is the finer details, and it's really hard to do the finer details when this epoxy is still this wet. So I think I'm going to wait for about 10 or 15 minutes and then come back and check it, and then once we're at a nice harder level, we can go ahead and start the detailing part of it and getting these more crisp. Hi guys, so we are back. It's been probably about 10 minutes. I basically just wanted to give the alcohol a chance to evaporate out. Um, so basically when I can touch this braid and it, I mean, it'll probably leave a small fingerprint indentation behind, but it's not sticking to my finger and it's not slimy to the touch anymore. Um, so now that we're at this point, we can start adding in some more details. So I'm gonna attempt to zoom in a little bit more here. Let's see if we can get this. We're just going to start adding more detail in. I'm just going to use just a little bit of alcohol on the tip of things, uh, tip of this tool, so that um, it doesn't stick to the epoxy. And then I'm going to continue just kind of going back and forth and looking at my reference picture and seeing just how the braid is shaped and how it goes into the other braids and work that in. So I'm gonna go in. I usually do one side first just to kind of get this in here. I always have like a little paper towel off to the side handy just to wipe off any excess um, epoxy. I want to do that frequently that we are not having to redo it over and over again. I apologize if you can hear the intermittent gunshots in the background here. I live in the country and apparently it's just a good day to shoot off a gun for no reason. You can start to see this is becoming more and more defined as we go. Braid goes under this one. It's really just kind of repeating these basic steps just over and over again until you get to the point where your epoxy can hold more detail and you are happy with how your braid looks. Of course, you could, you know, stop at any point you decide that your braid looks good. I will usually keep playing with the braid until I can no longer really sculpt, until it's just too hard to really take any new detail in, and then I'll just let it go. So, I'm just going to continue through here.
Alright, so I think I've gotten the braid to mostly where I want it to be. The rough shape is in, and then we've went ahead and defined it more and more. There's a few more areas I'm going to touch up along this side to make it a little more rounded. Using this flat edge of this spoon, my book is push this down and get this detailed in here. ball stylus. It's a decent size one. And this is what I will use to block in the mane. And I'm actually going to do a wavy mane tail and it's actually pretty easy to get this texture. You basically just make a little squiggly with your tool and drag it down towards the end to make it taper. And we're going to get our brush. Out. You can already see we've got kind of a nice little wavy texture. Yes. And then I'll go in with some smaller stylus tools to define that a little bit more. Once again, using the same little wiggly motion to give the impression that these are waves. I might well just brush that out again and again. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to do this bit up here after the rest of this cures so I don't wind up mushing something.
so I'm literally just using a little squiggly thing. Doing that. And just using the alcohol on your brush again to kind of knock back any harsh edges so we've got a nice soft detail. And for the braid up here. Oops. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back to using the really small ball stylus to add in the detail. Paint itself. And this just helps further define the braids. I'm gonna use this slightly bigger end. And I'm not going to do in the cracks yet. I'm just going to do kind of the outer part of the braid. This top part. I'm going to put this texture in here. Little tiny lines. I'll post some pictures of the finished work at the end here so you can see it in case it's not picking up the detail. It's hard to see. Do that all up and down either side of the braid. Thank you. 
once I have that texture in. At this point, you could be done. Um, this looks pretty awesome, and you can always add more depth um, depending on what color you're painting the horse. Um, you can add more depth with paint and pastels itself. Um, I do like to go in and add a little more depth and put in a few little pullaways here. And for that, I am going to use this tool. I really like this tool, so let's see if I can get it to focus. If not, I'll post pictures in the comments. Um, post pictures at the end. Um, it's a little tiny. It's got like a little tiny hook on the end of it, and it's flat, and it's rounded on the tip, so we can kind of get underneath there and make little loops. Um, at this point, I do make sure that I have alcohol on it so that it stays wet and doesn't make sharp lines. This is a little bit of an awkward part. Let's see if we can get this video. Actually, it might be the wrong shape for this braid. This is what I use for undercuts and a lot of other means and tails, but it doesn't always work for everything. So let's see what would be good for my undercuts. I think it might be might have to be this. So this is that pointed tool, the one of the dental tools. And I'll just go in and you don't have to do this on all the braids, but I'll go in and basically kind of help give it a little more depth and dimension. Or maybe there's the braid is a little bit off in one place, and so it's got a little bit extra. too much or push too much into here so we don't lose our braid shape.
point it's just like fiddly details. It's deciding like when enough is enough. I tend to sometimes do overdo it and I have to kind of reel myself in here. So at this point, before I mush anything or ruin any of the nice detailings I got in here, I think we're going to call this done. And what's good about the epoxy is that afterwards, after it cures, we will be able to go back in with a carbide scraper if we want and carve in a little bit more detail and define these a little bit more, which I think I might do afterwards. And I will um, share that process as well, probably in a separate, maybe some pictures, because I think that'll be better to get more detail in there. So here we are. Our braid is done. Put in a little final smoothing. Now I'm just going to set this aside and let this cure fully. And there you have it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or email me or contact me anywhere you see fit. Or, um, and I can, you know, of course, answer your questions. Um, if you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, you can go ahead and send me that as well in a message.